Okay. Yeah, thanks for doing this. I appreciate you coming thanks, on. Thanks, Lou. Thanks for having me. Uh, I spoke a little bit in the pre-intro on how you became a CrossFit coach. Oh, no, not about how you became a CrossFit coach, but like kind of your journey in CrossFit. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so can you just like kind of like recap for us how you became a coach and yeah. what led you to, to CrossFit? For sure, yeah. So I'm a CrossFit level one trainer. Mm-hmm. Um, and I got into CrossFit. I've been doing CrossFit for almost six years, I think. I can't really remember like when I started, but I wow. think my first class was... Uh, yeah maybe yeah. um my first class i think was on my birthday my like 20th birthday okay so this will be my why sixth on your year. birthday like I, who would want to do that on their birthday you know what i don't know because like i left and i was like this is really hard but yeah. I, I just like kept going back i started in st Catharines, okay. um because i went to brock for my undergrad right and i was honestly feeling so demotivated and like just I was feeling like really self-conscious with myself and I was like hey I really need to do something to get myself in shape and I didn't know how to do it at first because I was just I was like 19 turning 20 I was in university I was like I I don't know how to work out Mm -hmm. like I'm not you know Mm -hmm. I'm not an athlete I'm not anything so um coming from like an athletic family I just like didn't I just didn't know where to start. So I just Googled this thing called CrossFit. I don't even know how I came about it. Right. And I found a gym, you know, five minutes down the road from where I was living. And I went in and they, they it was crazy. I walked in and people are like throwing around weights. And I was just like, these people are insane. That's what I say now every time I see yeah. CrossFit vids. Hopefully by the end of this video, you think otherwise. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have to see how well you do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is like a test. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I walked in and they took me through my first session, which was just like super basic stuff. It Mm -hmm. was like, you know, like squats and like pull ups with a band and like box jumps and stuff like that. And I was like, hey, that was really hard. And I was like super embarrassed as the last one to finish. But I kept coming back. And then I, that's how I just like started CrossFit. It's just like an amazing place to start working So after out. the first session, we just sore as shit like for a couple of days? <laughs> I can't even. I literally can't even remember. Right. Probably. Probably. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I went out that night for my birthday. Damn. So maybe like the alcohol. Animal. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. We, um, alcohol definitely helps with recovery. That's for sure. Oh, is that what the science is saying now? Yes. That's what, yeah, that's what oh. I'm saying now. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here on this podcast. Um, but you say you come from that athletic family what do they do yeah so my sister has been a um like an elite high level hockey player like all her life yeah Mm -hmm. so she played the highest level that you can play in women's hockey and then she played for queen's university both my parents had played sports um growing up and stuff Mm -hmm. not to like an elite right right part but like i was always the one who's just like like, watching from the side i couldn't really find out like what i was into it took me a very long time took me 20 years to find out like my sport is crossfit Mm -hmm. and when i realized like how much i love the sport i decided to be a coach because i like the nerdy side of crossfit like Mm -hmm. the stats of like the workouts and how to develop good movement patterns all of those things and i figured um like i want to start teaching people how to do that and that's how i got into a coach two years ago i've been coaching for almost two years so it's like uh it's like a training you have to go through kind of like certificate yeah it's like a personal trainer yeah essentially so i had i had gotten my personal training certification first but it's not like a prerequisite for your Mm -hmm. crossfit level one Um, And that was like a weekend course. And same with CrossFit. It's a one weekend, like Mm -hmm. two day, very intensive, like full day course. And at the end, there's a there's a test which you have to pass in order to get certified. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's not like a crazy time commitment or anything. Right. It's a financial. But you still have to have some experience before you become a coach, right? You actually don't. This is you know this is something that is a little that concerns some people about Mm -hmm. the sport of CrossFit and like. How legit do you have to be right. to be a coach? Um, but I think that people who are passionate about the sport just kind of fall into the place of being a coach. Like, I mean, yeah, I'm sure you're not going to become a coach unless you really like the whole CrossFit idea. Yeah. Like, yeah. And um, like, honestly, I don't know anything about like CrossFit before I before I had you on. Like, and I did all this research for CrossFit. I didn't know much about it. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not like, I'm not trying to be too critical of CrossFit. Mm-hmm. I'm just... I really don't know. Like, it's from a place of ignorance. Yeah. Uh, rather than, like, uh, anything against CrossFit. But, yeah, I mean, like, the the thing you hear a lot about CrossFit is that, hey, anyone can become a, a trainer. Or maybe not anyone, but, like, it's easy to become a trainer. That's kind of a concern for people, no? Totally. It is a concern for people. But um, 
I think my best response to that is like anybody can become a personal trainer. Like you yeah. don't even need to have a background in kinesiology or anything like that. Mm-hmm. You can just be like, you know what? I just want to be a trainer and I want to train people at like Good Life or LA Fitness. And you do the same like two day course, get yeah. write a test and and get certified. So really like I think the onus and responsibility is on the person who's coming into a CrossFit gym to kind of get a feel of like the coaches or the trainers that are Mm -hmm. there and really understand like if this is a good place for you to train or if it's not a good place for you to train. Yeah. I mean, but also with the personal trainers, anyone can become a trainer. You're right. Like with a, with a two day course or something. Yeah. But that's also not good. No, I I don't think so. Yeah. yeah, Two wrongs don't make it right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I don't know how, how they can mitigate that or or I don't, I don't know. Maybe just don't maybe have them have like at least a degree in, and fitness or nutrition, something like that. I mean, like all colleges have fitness programs. Yeah, that's a good point. I think there are some personal training um, certifications that do require yeah, no, that. That's true. But there's like yeah. CanFit Pro, which like yeah. which I have because I don't have a degree in Kin. Mm-hmm. Well, like a bachelor's degree in yeah. Kin, um, which I just got because like I wanted to start mm-hmm. being a personal trainer. So, right. yeah, I mean, there's flaws in every system. That's true. Yeah, that's fair enough. Mm-hmm. But you like being a coach. Like, yeah, I love being. Do a coach. you get to also train as much as you used to before when you were in the coach, or now you're just focused on working? I think I'm. Uh, I think I train more, honestly, yeah. just because like I around it more. Uh, yeah, because I'm around it more, and I see other people like wanting right. to get better, and I'm just mm-hmm. like, hey, I need to put in more time mm-hmm. to get better. And I think what coaching has helped me do is take some suggestions that I see like online on how to coach certain movements, and I'll try them out myself. Right. And then I'll coach them. Yeah, like practice. And what you it, yeah, like exactly. Yeah. And that's I think a huge thing. And um, I think as a personal trainer or a coach, anything you're kind of your own walking advertisement. Mm-hmm. Like if you don't look the part, there's that's a true. good chance that someone's not gonna um, trust you to yeah. make you, Do you look like them. You have to like have calluses them. on your hand, and like. I mean, no. No, Do but... you have to have a bad back. <laughs> I definitely have a bad back. <laughs> I think, yeah, I mean, yeah. there might be certain prerequisites right. for like sure. If you have a little hunch, people would be like, yeah, I'm going to go with this coach because yeah, she, can, she has experience. Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, actually, I, I guess I should ask you first, like, what exactly is CrossFit for people who may not know? Yeah. Like, I all I know about CrossFit is that it's a bunch of, like, crazy intense high speed movements but i don't know exactly what it what it is what the philosophy behind it is yeah so um i can definitely start with the, the definition of crossfit okay. which is kind of like ingrained into our heads when we started um our mm-hmm. training when session uh, i mean when you, when you train yeah right? when we get converted yeah. into yeah. the cult yeah exactly um so crossfit is basically a series of um functional movements mm-hmm. that we perform at relatively high intensities and they're constantly varied so it just means that like we like to take movement patterns that we see in our everyday life and train them right at high intensities which is why you see those videos on instagram or social Mm -hmm. media of us like running around like crazy people i only watch the failed videos to be honest yeah such a bad it gives such a bad impression yeah yeah but i mean i still get it you can watch failed videos about anything yeah regular training anything that's true any sport yeah yeah um but the thing that gets me about is like it's a sport and and people call it sport which i at first i was like no it's not but then yeah it is like if i guess if you compete yeah. If there are, you know, competitions, there's yeah. ranking. Yeah. You train for a certain competition. That does make it a sport. Yeah. That's actually what I, like, I was hoping you would ask this because, yeah. like, you come from a sport background. Um, I personally think it's a sport because um, it's actually an exciting time in the CrossFit season because we're training for something called the Open right now, which is, like, five weeks, and there's a workout every week. Mm-hmm. And you get ranked across your – like worldwide across your region across your age group anything and the people who win the open get to go to the crossfit games so like there is a training season and it it really depends on how serious you want to take it like am i ever going to win the open absolutely not like i'm Mm. not that good but will i still participate and see how good i do yeah and like that's the comp like competitive side of crossfit there's also like local competitions that crossfit gyms will put on um just to have people who are like into competing Mm -hmm. just try their best and see how well they do against other people that don't go to their gym like what does a typical competition look like yeah comps are comps are so much fun like usually they're one day some of them are two days like on a weekend 
Um, they'll start early in the morning and go till about five o'clock in the evening. And there's a series of events, usually four to five events that happen. And they're a mix of like all these different movements. So we yeah. have like Olympic lifting. Recently, there's been like bench presses and workouts, which I think is like incredible, like a power lifting movement okay. in CrossFit. And um, we have a lot of gymnastics. And then there's like your Metcon stuff. So like you're running and you're rowing, mm-hmm. um, you're skipping and stuff like that. And they basically just come up with these workouts and we call them events for that day and people do the best that they can whether it's like for time like for completion um as many reps or rounds as Mm -hmm. you can or for weight and then you get ranked across the people who are competing in your like division Mm. and you get to stand on a podium if you win like it's super fun flex on on the peasants (laughs) who didn't complete it Is there good money yeah. in CrossFit? Like if you're high level, like you're winning the open, like you said, like are you are you raking in? I mean, cash? yeah, I think it's you can definitely make it a profession. Yeah, like there is like the salaries of people who mm-hmm. win the CrossFit well, sponsorships games. and stuff like that. Totally, yeah. yeah. People are getting sponsored by like Nike, Reebok, like mm-hmm. Adi- like everything. Um, how much time you need to put in and dedication is like yeah, I mean, just yeah. like every other athlete, but like CrossFit is, mm-hmm. I think like we have the craziest athletes. I think because it's an individual sport for the most part. Like you can go team in the games, mm-hmm. but they don't win as much money. But uh, okay, yeah. so like the thing I don't I don't really get about CrossFit. I think most people don't either. Is like. Mm-hmm. Um, why do those like super intense, super crazy movements if you can just stick with like regular, uh, like a regular workout plan or like re- regular bodybuilding or something like that? You know what I mean? It's like why take it to the extreme? Mm-hmm. Like, w- is the benefit worth the the uh, the risk? Is my question. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, like in terms of injuries, in terms of I don't know all the craziness. Like, is it worth it? Yeah, I mean, I think the best place to start is to kind of, like, clear the air and, like, help people understand that we don't do everything, like, to 110%, like, mm-hmm. maximal intensity every single day. Like, obviously, like, if you do that, your risk of injury is going to increase and your form is going to get compromised and you probably okay. won't get, like, the best benefits. Um, The best gyms follow, like, periodized programming where, like... For a quarter of the year, we're working on our metabolic conditioning. So it's very stamina-based. We're doing longer workouts or shorter bursts of intensity with rest in between. Then on the off-season, probably when the games are over, most gyms Mm -hmm. will do like a strength-building program where we're working on like just building strength and then tapering off. So, I mean, you can. You can follow your own bodybuilding program. But I think what draws people to crossfit is like the community aspect of it like Like the camaraderie right because you don't really get that in regular no you don't you don't you don't get that in any type of regular like we call them globo gyms (laughs) where you just like i I don't even know (laughs) oh like the regular uh non-crossfit gyms yeah exactly we call them globo gyms that's a very like so you guys look down on us peasants peasants like Mm -hmm. you said which is true (laughs) i mean for the most part Yeah. yeah um where was i going with this yeah so like we do follow like programming and because there is a coach there you know like Mm -hmm. you're putting a lot of trust in the coach to know what they're talking about but those who do know what they're talking about will help you like correct your form give you pointers give you cues and um and then we'll do like a workout of the day which is supposed to be performed at like a high intensity um just to get your heart rate up and like burn calories and Mm -hmm. have fun doing it like there's you can take it like how intense you want to for that day we're not going to be like get down and right. give me 20 or no you guys don't do that no okay interesting, interesting. no uh but it's, it's mostly like in a class environment right it's not like your own thing you're not doing your own kind uh, of workout are you yeah no so um the way most gyms are structured mm-hmm. is that there's set class times and you will be in a class maybe of like I think the upper limit is around 20 people and like the lower limits around like 10. It really depends how busy the class is that day. Mm -hmm. And you're among a group of people who are training together. So the coach will take you through the proper warm up. We'll usually work on like a lift or a skill after that. So, you know, if it's back squats that day or Mm -hmm. a snatch or clean and jerk or a skill like gymnastics, like dips and pull ups or pistols like one-legged squats stuff like that and then the end will be like our wad so like workout of the day and that after that there's still the workout of the day yeah 
okay. Usually they're short. Like, I mean, the longer side of things are like you're looking at like 15, 20 minutes. And the shorter side, you're looking at like, you know, five to eight. Yeah. Is only five to, to 10 minutes, something like that? Yeah. Well, oh. it, like it literally depends. It literally. Like, I guess because it's so high intensity that you you don't have to work out that long. Yeah, True. exactly. And um, I mean, a lot of gyms now are doing things like open gym where like you can come do whatever you want. Like there's no mm-hmm. programming structure for that. And you can like work on accessory work or work on bodybuilding or accessories and right. um, all of that stuff, which I do like, I love because it kind of puts the onus onto the person to like get better and practice things that they might not be able to practice in a class. Mm-hmm. Um, but the structure of that workout, like from the warm up to the end of the workout of the day is the same for each of the classes for that day. Okay. So what it like the whole constantly varied thing is like there's going to be different movements every day in different orders. You might see some pattern of like lifting Mm -hmm. or something like that, but it's different from day to day. So like the 6 a.m. class is doing the same workout as the 6 p.m. class. Um, Right. Yeah. On that day. So what's like the philosophy kind of behind crossfit like when when it's i think it's just like a guy who started right i forgot his name yeah his name is greg glassman right he started it in i think the early 2000s like it's Mm -hmm. it's still like quite new it is yeah we're talking it's a young uh right yeah it's evolving very quickly too Mm -hmm. um the whole philosophy of crossfit is to kind of we're not trying to specialize in any realm of fitness we're trying to just be kind of a jack of all trades, like trying to be good at everything, not great at one thing, Mm -hmm. not really bad at another thing Um, across like weightlifting, gymnastics and um, like your cardio conditioning. Um, And the whole point of it is to give these like three domains some accessibility to every single person. So one of my favorite quotes of all time that Greg Glassman has said is like the I'm probably going to mess this up, too definitely gonna butcher it yeah totally so like the um the needs the of early bird gets the war <laughs> yeah, did he say that he probably yeah, did yeah he probably did <laughs> he probably did when he started crossfit in yeah. the early 2000s um so the needs of like your training differ by degree and not kind so what i need to do that kind of just bamboozled me yeah so it's like really cool because if you look at you know me like mid-20s pretty fit Versus my grandma, who's never Mm. really, like, worked out. She walks around the block. We both need to be strong. Like, if we want to be fully functioning people until we grow old, we both need to have, like, good movement patterns. Okay. We both need to know how to pick groceries up off of the ground and lift them up and put them in the cupboard, which is essentially, like, exactly, which is, like, your deadlift and your press. But does my grandma need to be clean and jerking 100 pounds? No, absolutely not. That's where Mm -hmm. injury happens but i can do that so like we don't differ by needs we differ by degree right degree of difficulty degree of like technicality but then is the injury risk worth all that i mean if you do like i think that if you are in a class with a coach watching you who knows what they're doing your injury risk is not going to be very high unless i turn my back and you like put on like 150 pounds on the bar and try to do something that I mm-hmm. fully advised you not to do. Mm-hmm. Um, you can easily get injured doing like really dumb bodybuilding movements at like LA Fitness with nobody watching you. Some video that you saw on Instagram that you're like, he has muscles. I'm going to do that too. Right. You know, it's just, and I think a really good part of CrossFit is that you're getting educated as you mm-hmm. come to these classes. Like, oh, proper form in a squat, proper form in a deadlift, how I can maximize efficiency in movements. Mm-hmm. Things that, like, people don't really know or think about if they just had went to a normal gym. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess the quality of the coach would control the degree of injury that you're, you're exposed to. Yeah, totally. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. So when I was looking at, like, Injury risks of, of CrossFit. Obviously, my intention was to find things that make CrossFit look bad so I can look good myself. Yeah, nice. Because, okay. because I'm a hater, mm-hmm. as you know. But um, but there's only been... So there's one systematic literature review. I know, yeah. And it, I should say this. It only has three studies. So because like the field is kind of new and not, not a lot of people do research in here. Mm-hmm. Um, but it showed that the risk of injury between CrossFit and sports like 
Um, it was the gymnastics, football, rugby, and soccer, and Olympic hockey. Weightlifting too. Olympic weightlifting. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they compared CrossFit to those other sports, and they didn't see like much of a difference, if at all, mm-hmm. there was one. Um, again, there's only three studies, so it's not like really replicable, but but still, mm-hmm. um, that kind of surprised me. I mean, I was expecting to, to see a higher risk of injury. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that stems from like maybe the stigma around it, not the stigma, like the kind of like the reputation of it. Mm-hmm. And I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean. Like, if we're kind of categorizing CrossFit as a sport, which, like, for the sake of this discussion, we are, then I think that the injury risk would be the same as if you, like, played hockey or basketball, like that review kind of stated. Um, yeah. I guess, yeah, you're right. If you look at you know? it as a sport, because um, I always looked at it as... A bunch of nuts you, I was doing. Not, not doing just that. I look at it as, like, stuff. exercise. Yeah. And I thought, well, why would I risk getting injured when I'm just exercising? That's a good point. I think I think everybody kind of has like this like mindset switch. Mm-hmm. They might enter CrossFit being like this is a really good exercise program that can probably like sustain adherence mm-hmm. because you're finding accountable like partners in your classes and um all of those things that would like make you stick around. But at some point, like I think everybody gets into this like I want to be a better athlete like they don't see themselves as an exerciser they start to see themselves as an athlete athlete. because you're training like an athlete you start thinking like an athlete like if I have this like poutine I'm probably going to feel really bad tomorrow when I go into the gym so I'm not going to have it like Mm -hmm. just those mindset switches that kind of make you more competitive and whether you're more competitive against yourself or the other people in your gym it doesn't really matter is when you start to take more risks in your training which could either lead to, mm-hmm. you know, payoff or injury. Right. But, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's one thing I never considered, actually, until now, until we started talking, is, like, mm-hmm. when we talk about risk of injury in CrossFit, mm-hmm. which is always something that I thought was high. Um, but I guess we sh- what we should do is maybe kind of differentiate between risk of injury in CrossFit as someone who just exercises yeah. to kind of, like, lose weight, feel better, um, maybe like socialize with people mm-hmm. and between someone who does CrossFit to compete. Yeah. And the risk of injury is not going to be the same. I guess it's kind of like soccer. Like I play soccer once a week in a Sunday league. Yeah. My risk of injury is not the same as someone who plays, you know, university soccer, trains every day and competes totally. multiple times a week. Yeah. I think, I think I would have kind of like the same like speculations and like hypothesis as you um, where like my mom who does CrossFit, like... She does? Yeah, she does. She's nice. been doing it for almost a year. So um that's really great she comes three times a week and like she just does it to like she's like i'm gonna go see my friends tonight at crossfit so like socially right. so she, just for her it's the more laid back kinda. yeah like she's not gonna do the open she doesn't want right. to compete um you know and like the injury risk is like so low for her because she's not pushing herself right. although i'm there being like if you're co- to compete against your mom would you just dust her like do you think you'll just go all out against her well, yeah. Yeah. I course. mean, we worked You're out like, together. Mom's going down. Like, come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm competitive. I'm a competitive of person. Course. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then people like me, if we're talking competitive, like, want to be better every day. So we're going to be training. Like, I mm-hmm. train like an hour and a half, two hours a day. I'm there. You know, five, six days a week. So the injury right. risk is going to be higher. Mm-hmm. That's true. Now, how much like time do you think I can last in a CrossFit class? Don't look. Are you looking at me like up and down like this, like this shit? Let's do shit. I don't. uh, I mean, you kind of build up a tolerance to it, but Mm -hmm. like. No, I mean like first time, like going in first time, first class. Not beginners, jumping right in. Like just coming into a class. I don't think you could last. Like maybe like a lot of people who come in are like the warm up was hard, and I was like the warm up was like three rounds of like ten burpees and like. No, I agree. I'm with you. I think that's how long it lasts. Yeah. I'll give myself like 12 minutes. Yeah. To 15 minutes. Probably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That sounds about right. Um, But so from your experience as a coach, (laughs) it's true. I would not. Man, I went to Muay Thai class one time. And um, this is like when I first kind of started doing Muay Thai. Mm -hmm. And um, I puked after like 10 minutes of warm up. (laughs) And I was in decent shape back then. Like all I did was kind of. Do you still do it? Yeah, from time okay. to time. Okay. Uh, after that, I stopped puking. Or sometimes if I puke, it's after the gym. Oh, okay. So that's because I'm drunk. When you're home. Yeah, that's, yeah when I'm home. But, uh, like, I was in a decent-ish shape. Like, I, mm-hmm. I've been working out for a long time. And mm-hmm. 
never tried a martial art class, so I went there and it's a lot harder than you think. And I imagine CrossFit is somewhat similar. Yeah, I think it's just like if – like I'm sure if I went into a Muay Thai class, it's just this change in stimulus. Like maybe I would throw up 10 minutes after the yeah, workout or the warm-up, you know? Yeah. People aren't used to – like people are used to a five-minute treadmill warm-up on zero incline and five miles per hour. Mm-hmm. Not even, like three miles per hour. Mm-hmm. So like – when you tell them to do like three rounds of like 15 squats, 10 burpees and 10 push-ups, they're like, this is like my hit workout, you know, right. that I do at the end of my, mm-hmm. and I was like, no boo, this is the warm up. Like, No, honey. <laughs> no, well, so honey. actually speaking of hit, I was going to ask you like, what's the difference between hit, which is something I do all the time mm-hmm. and CrossFit? I think the biggest difference is hit. Hit is high intensity interval training for people who don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can classify CrossFit as high intensity interval training, Mm -hmm. but it's not always like hit is like rest work. And I'm sure there's like some sort of ratio that varies. CrossFit is like sometimes we have like two minutes of work, two minutes of rest for five rounds. Sometimes it's like do all this work in 20 minutes and see how far you can get. So I so think it's not as structured the in terms time of the domain, ratios. yeah, the ratio and time domains are different. Mm-hmm. And I think CrossFit literally can throw in any type of movement into your like high intensity mm-hmm. um, workout. And I, I think hit might be a little bit more limiting. I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. I don't really do hit. So, right. Yeah. yeah. But it still lasts around the same time. It's like 20 to 25 minutes. Yeah. I would assume that's similar. Yeah. The and I mean, there's so on. much research that shows like how effective HIT is. Like yeah, you hit, don't I need to hit. be on the treadmill for yeah. 60 minutes doing steady state when you can get the same benefits mm-hmm. for t- from 20 minutes. Yeah. If not more, because yeah. with HIT, like your body's, your metabolism is like firing the entire day, mm-hmm. not just during the, the workout mm-hmm. and it utilizes more fat stores and all that. So yeah. It's, yeah. I might actually try a CrossFit uh, class. You should, man. Is there should one I? near you? I've never done one, and like I, I don't know anything about it. Actually, there's yeah, there's a gym, uh, or a box. Do you guys call it boxes? Yeah. Why do you call them a box? Honestly, can you not just call it a gym? I know it's that's like you very want, like, it's like you want people, just like to, we call to it to make fun of you. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. No, I know. I think that's a very like old school CrossFit kind of like vibe where it's like, yeah. oh, I'm gonna go to my box and like work out and stuff um and i think it's because of like how the gyms have evolved Mm -hmm. from being in a little garage with a couple rubber mats some bumper plates a barbell and a pull-up rig and that's all you really needed to do crossfit but now it's kind of trending towards this like whole boutique fitness where like you have really nice equipment Mm -hmm. the front foyer looks really nice there's like front staff and there's towel service at some gyms and like smoothie bars and water bottle like all of those things and that's why i think like it it definitely they do start in in like like units like industrial units but it's trending towards boutique Mm. fitness but they started with like you know it would be acceptable to have it like yeah right yeah and so is it true that there's no mirrors in gyms yeah yeah there's no mirrors, which is like some people get like so like, oh, my God, I can't look at myself while I'm working out. And we just like What's emphasize. The point of that? Like, is, it, is it like to kind of like keep your focus on the task rather than mm-hmm. keep checking yourself and kind of getting distracted? Totally. Yeah. We're like trying to be a little we're trying to steer people away from the aesthetic part of exercising and physical activity and trying to switch their mindset to performance and like how do you feel while you're doing this Mm -hmm. kind of being in tune like with everything working at the same time like how can you adjust things without looking in the mirror um and we don't want people like staring at themselves because that kind of limits your social interaction with people if you're like i'm like hey lou how are you and i'm like looking at myself in the mirror i'm just like flexing my triceps (laughs) exactly so we're just trying to like increase community building without having anyone be insecure about how they look and yeah which i think is like amazing like i i see the point behind it yeah like Mm -hmm. you want to keep people focused kind of not get distracted sometimes when you look in the mirror you might get discouraged at times totally yeah uh because you always keep checking your progress but in reality it takes a long time exactly yeah it's kind of like when they tell you not to step on the scale like when you first start working out Mm -hmm. like don't step on scale every other day because you're just going to be disappointed Mm -hmm. like give it a long time and then see your results Mm mm-hmm 
Makes sense. Um, I guess like we should talk about the elephant in the room, which is rhabdomyolysis, right? Yeah. I'm sure you guys are all familiar with it. I actually know someone who got rhabdo. Great. This is exactly what I needed. But I I didn't see him get rhabdo. (laughs) I heard that he got rhabdo. Um, for people who don't know, it's, it's, a it's a condition you get when your muscles, um, sorry, when, when cells in your body or especially in your muscles, they kind of like almost explode mm-hmm. from overexertion. And then when they explode, the protein, especially myoglobin, they leak into the bloodstream and then that can cause, um, like kidney failure yeah. and a whole bunch of other yeah. shit that you don't want. Yeah. Uh, and so... It's really serious. It's like very you need serious. To go to the yes, ER, no joke. Like right away. Yeah. And in CrossFit, they have this reputation of having like a higher chance or higher risk of, of getting rhabdo because, of course, it's you know you're prone to be to overexertion when mm-hmm. you're working out. So, how cognizant are you guys in the CrossFit community about that? Like, do you do you keep that in mind at mm-hmm. all, or do you look at it as like ah, anyone can get it? Like, screw that. Yeah, I mean, I think we we kind of always preface to new people coming in like we do tell them like these are some risks like the chances of you getting rhabdo like and you like know when you get rhabdo like you can feel it right away and you're like hey i need someone to call 911 like you need to be like so mentally like focused and i don't want to say i don't want to yeah, like, you, like, why do you keep pushing if it's if it hurts? Like, just. But then you might think that's just normal soreness because, like, when you work out, it hurts. Yeah, I don't. I've never had rhabdo, so I I don't know the difference. But yeah, because I'm assuming it starts as like soreness, right? And so, so you might think, well, I'm sore. Of course, I'm sore. I'm working out. And little do you know, you're you're developing it slowly. Yeah, maybe. And then I think like you get like blood in your urine, and that's like a. But that that happens a bit after, it's yeah. like not right away. Mm-hmm. So, um, I don't know. To me, that's like the thing that that's most terrifying with CrossFit is like yeah. that risk of rhabdo. Totally, but I think that if you like don't push yourself, like you know your limits. You know the like mm-hmm. know your limits, play within it, like yeah. slogan. For, like... I don't live by that at all because I <laughs> lose too much money on gambling. <laughs> But, I, I get what but uh, yeah, you know, and like, don't be stupid when you're working out. Like, don't put X amount of weight on the bar when you shouldn't be or scale the workout appropriately mm-hmm. is how we um, kind of deter people from trying to let their ego get the best of them. And as a coach, you know, gets to know the people in the gym and sees them work out every day, I step in and I like hey man listen like that's way too much weight on the bar like i don't think that's sustainable for the amount of time that you have Mm -hmm. why don't we just scale it back a little bit and like it's the coach's responsibility to do that but it's also the athlete's responsibility to know like okay i'm not that good yet i'm i should take it down but here's the thing it's like they're not athletes just yet like they're they're inexperienced so it's yeah more we, on the we coach. call them athletes we we just call them athletes all because right we okay want... that's my biggest problem not rabdo <laughs> someone who just stepped in the gym we not call them athletes. athletes because we want them to take their like health and fitness seriously because we want them to when they leave the gym mm-hmm. carry the same mindset that an athlete would have not the like you know crazy I, I part of an athlete how, how but to live like, your life like an yeah athlete. exactly okay. you know making healthy choices mm-hmm. um getting good sleep staying hydrated all of these things that are part of living a healthy lifestyle right um so we call them athletes for me for I'll me like them. i think the definition of an athlete is probably subjective like who, whoever wants to call themselves an athlete like go ahead mm-hmm. um i mean like if you're if you play chess and you call yourself an athlete, like <laughs> you can, but I mean, like, like you're dumb, but you yeah, can. Yeah. Um, for me, an athlete is someone who like uh, trains regularly and competes mm-hmm. regularly. Mm-hmm. Like someone who only trains but doesn't compete. I don't know. If I can call them an athlete as long as there's a competition aspect of it. Yeah. And it's physical. Mm-hmm. It's a physical like endeavor. Then I think it. Yeah, you can. You can technically be an athlete yeah so i'll give you this kind of situation on how things are kind of set up in a gym we'll usually have some sort of platform whether it's like a you know on your phone or on your laptop or written on the like whiteboard that's at the gym of like what the workout is and like you posting your time or your weight or your reps so it's kind of this like leaderboard that happens every day would you call that competition if you're ranking yourself against other people at the end of the day yeah, I guess. 
So if you choose to and enter a score, for sure yeah, if you choose to enter a score or write it down, then mm -hmm. you're an athlete. But for me, uh, mostly it was like competing in tournaments, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or like in competitions, like, uh, competitions yeah. rather. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So tell me about uh, the person who got rabdo. To be honest, like we were still doing alive? this. Yeah, it's still alive, still great. working out. Oh, doing, great. Doing great. Just went back the next day. I don't know if it was the next day, but it was, I don't know. Um, I, again, I wasn't at that gym when that happened, but I heard that they were doing this very famous workout called Murph and, mm -hmm. um, we call it a hero workout. We do, there's a lot of workouts that are called hero workouts in which we kind of do them to honor people who have served in the military. It's more of a like patriotism, like USA, like okay. America type of thing. Um, but Murph is the most famous one. So it's a one mile run mm -hmm. and then you do a hundred pull-ups, 200 push-ups, 300 squats in a row and then another one mile run at the end so that's a lot okay, of they volume they should call it the rabdo workout not yeah enough. like it's a lot of volume yeah. for people and again he wanted to do it um have you done that workout yeah i've done it but i scaled it because i'm like 100 pull-ups like i won't be able to extend my arms for probably a week so i actually did it with my boyfriend and he did like five and then i would do five and then he would do five and then i would do five so like we scaled it appropriately to Okay. our abilities all so right. I, I i have a hunch this person probably didn't scale it they just went all out i think so hmm. yeah i don't know the full story i just know that and then they got robbed though and they start peeing blood yeah literally i think yeah i think that's what happens i guess when you get mm -hmm. that's messed up mm -hmm. but that workout i mean come on no i know they had it in the crossfit games like twice i think murph mm-hmm takes people like an hour like if you do it under an hour like you're good that's a good time oh are you kidding me under an hour is legendary yeah i was thinking more like half the day yeah so actually like a couple years ago they did it in the crossfit games and it was like so so hot because they were in i don't know they were in some state that was like really hot mm -hmm. so um yeah one girl had to get carried out on a stretcher and she's good. Like, she's, like, really, really, really good at CrossFit. She is, her name's Kara Saunders, and she's from Australia. She sounds like a CrossFitter. Her her thighs are that massive. Is... Yeah, her quads are crazy. Of course. Um, and she got carried out on a stretcher because, like, the heat exhaustion just, like, killed her. So, like, it can literally happen to anybody. Like, Joe Schmo off the road or Kara Saunders at the CrossFit, CrossFit Games. Yeah. Yeah, well, it can happen to anybody as long as you're doing CrossFit, though. So you got to be careful. <laughs> you have to be careful. You have to be, but don't let your ego get the best of you. That's what I tell people a lot. Okay. Like I like internally cringe when I see someone like try to do a weight that they can't do, mm -hmm. and I'm and I literally I intervene right away, and I'm like, dude, not today. Like, yeah, no. You should do what I do at the gym. It's like I put too what, much pull weight out on, like, your phone and like. Yeah, and like I'm clearly struggling. I'd be like, ah, oh, and then I'd act like, oh, I'm I'm injured or something. Like I'm rehabbing <laughs> and just looking around, seeing like who's who's looking at me. I replaced the 45 with like a 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so speaking of heat, do CrossFit gyms have like high heat? Like they crank up the heat or no? Like what do you mean? Like are they not working in a heated environment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like definitely like a, a thermostat and I don't know, like a heater. Like why? What do you mean? Like, do they crank up the heat during the workouts? Well, no, it's not like hot yoga. But well, like, that's if what, it's that was like, my question. Oh. Are they cranking up? <laughs> it's not hot yoga, but it's like they heat up the like place. Hot like hot CrossFit. I mean, yeah. like you just heat it up to get it back to like room temperature so that you it's a comfortable environment to work out in. So it's room temperature. Yeah. You don't want it to be like too cold where no, your okay, muscles I know. aren't it's, staying it's, warm. Yeah, my, my question but was. The, the problem is, is like in the, in the summer there's no air conditioning because we're in an industrial unit. So like we'll have the garage doors up from the unit, but there's no like airflow. We yeah, have but like it's still hot as little fans, but yeah. Hmm. It's not pleasant in like middle of July. Oh, how about I just install some AC? I, yeah. That's Find a gym that has AC, I guess. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Because yeah, my idea was of CrossFit I thought was like Kind of like hot yoga, like that like sounds it's like a torture. Heat, heat. Like I can't. I know. And like super, like prone to injury because then everything is like sweaty. Like you would need like ten pounds of chalk to just keep your hands dry, so you could grip things. Do you use chalk a lot? Yeah. I guess you have to if you're doing <laughs> clean and jerks seventy five times in a row. Yeah, that's true. Um, but as far as injuries, like, have you had any serious ones? Me personally, yeah. 
not serious. I mean, like, I tweaked my back, like, almost a month ago. And it's not, like, Mm -hmm. it's still not, like, 100%, but. Right. My problem is, is, like, I let my ego get ahead of me. Like, you know what? It doesn't matter if I'm injured. I'm still going to lift, which, like, stops recovery. For sure don't do that. Yeah. No, for sure don't do that. Right. Do as I say, not, not as, as I, I do. Not as I do. Right, that's yeah. true. Mm-hmm. But around you, people around you, are they always, you know, like, if you would assess the risk of injury on your own, is, it, would... is that prevalent? No, I'd say it's pretty low, especially mm-hmm. for people who have been there for a few years or know what they're doing. Um, it's pretty low. And then the people who are new, we just need to, like, hold their hand a little bit more. Right. And, um So yeah. I guess it all comes down to how knowledgeable and experienced your coach is. Yeah. Because... You on your own as a, someone who's just starting CrossFit, you're not going to know what you're doing anyway. No. But if your coach is well trained, experienced, then yeah, they and can... I like I think it it's like you can have all the experience and knowledge in the world, but you mm-hmm. really need to care. Like it's so easy for you to turn your back and just be like, you know what, I'm just going to let that person do what they're doing. But like, you mm-hmm. need to find a coach who like actually cares about their clients and their their athletes mm-hmm. <laughs> and their You're members athlete, yeah. Right. um yeah it's all about caring why like well, why is there a this like culty vibe in, in crossfit that's so funny because everyone who's who talks about crossfit they're like you guys are so weird you wear the the same weird clothes the same like wrist I mean, wraps they're workout knees. clothes yeah but like I think CrossFit has certain types of workout clothes that are, like, so unique to CrossFit. Like, the girls wear, like, booty shorts. And the guys, like, don't wear shirts. Yeah, I know. Not interesting. interesting. <laughs> Go on. Um, and the culty vibe, I think, I think that's just people looking on the outside. Like, on the outside looking in. Mm-hmm. Who just, like, don't understand it. Because I don't, I don't see what's wrong with us, like, wanting to push ourselves and wanting to be at the gym and making ourselves better. Like, I don't see anything wrong with that. Oh, there's definitely, like, an element of, of uh, being a hater in that. Oh, totally. And, like, I'll, I'll admit. Yeah. Have you heard of the Jillian Michaels, like, drama with CrossFit? And... Who's Jillian Michaels? Oh, wait, that, that, that fitness lady? Byron, I hope she watches this. Oh, she does watch this, of course. Everyone watches this. I hope this. she listens to uh, this. Is that the fitness lady? Yeah, I know. She's so, like, irrelevant, right? She's the she's her... the trainer who did like the biggest loser. She's that lady. Oh, actually, because last week I was looking up videos on keto diet. Oh, and she like and hated she on came the keto up because she was and that's how I found out who she was. Yeah, and so recently She did the biggest loser? Yeah, she's like the personal trainer for the biggest loser. Okay. But recently she after she hated on keto, she decided to hate on CrossFit and like it's so 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 funny. Like, you need to just watch it. I think it's only on Instagram. So what did she say? She basically just talks, like, the most crap about it. And I'm like, none of it is true. She, my favorite one is she says that she's like, there's maybe 20 to 25 movements that are just repeated over and over again. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I'm like, no, there's not. And, like, the whole point of CrossFit is to keep it constantly varied and mix different modalities of training and mm-hmm. keep it interesting and fun and challenging at the same time. Fair enough. Yeah. She does seem like a bitter, bitter lady at times. Yeah. It's probably because, like, people don't know who she is anymore, right? That's true. Yeah. I mean, if I didn't know who she was until last week, then... And I know a lot of people. Yeah. So... You're a popular guy. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess, like, a part of why people think it's a cult, and I'll admit, it's, like, when I walk, when I drive by a CrossFit gym and, like, I see the garage door open and people are, like, yelling and, or, like, when I see people on Instagram, like, all right, like. Chill out. Yeah, chill out. Yeah. I guess a part of it is maybe on me and people like me. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, why do you feel that way? Like, oh, look at those jerks. Because I'm just like, a crusty just... guy. <laughs> 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 I mean, people are just trying to, like, if you really look at it, it's, like. People are just trying to work out and like improve their lives. Yeah, and I don't, I don't see the hate that goes maybe, with maybe it. Maybe it's just like, and, like the we're intensity the, and all that. Maybe, but we're like the nicest people. people. Like, okay, while I'm working out, I'm not the nicest person. I'm like, hey, like, mm-hmm. don't try to have a conversation with me because yeah. you know I'm trying to train. But after, like, if you want to know what CrossFit is, like, let's go have a chat. Like, and we're like we're super nice people. Don't be too nice because that makes me more crusty. 
you know, when you're bitter and someone's being so nice and you're like, oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, I guess especially also like they, um, what makes it especially, uh, I don't want to say culty, but like it's, it's the camaraderie, right? Because it's mm-hmm. like, it is classes. It's people together in a group. Yeah. But, I you know, Yeah. Belonging to a group is... Uh, something, something that, that all humans want exactly i was just gonna say it's something that you know everybody searches for in some like realm you know and like mm-hmm. the older we get i think the harder it is um and like never did i think someone like my mom would come in and, and meet new people and have conversations and be like mm-hmm. hey like how's your whatever like how's this in your life outside right. of like whatever you're doing inside the mm-hmm. gym and I think that's the best part about CrossFit is like you have people who are from different parts of the world or your area, your region Mm -hmm. coming together to find one thing in common Mm -hmm. and then like just bonding over it. And like part of it is like you're kind of suffering together through this like really crappy workout. And at the end, you're like, wow, I can't believe we did that. That was so hard. It's rewarding. It is. Yeah. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. So who do you think would benefit from doing CrossFit? Like who... Yeah. Generally speaking. Generally speaking, I think CrossFit is one of the most inclusive, like, exercise programs or places, you know. Um, If we go back to, like, the example that I use between, like, me and my grandma, like, Mm -hmm. it's applicable to both. If you're looking to generally improve your movement patterns, maybe lose a little bit of weight or definitely lose weight. and But maybe not as far as your grandma. Yeah, my my grandma can do CrossFit if she wanted to. We just we would stick her with a little PVC pipe like a that's as light as a broomstick and teach her how to move well, you know. But, but would like the high intensity be good for her? Probably not. It wouldn't be to the point where like her heart rate is you know 150 beats per minute. But high intensity for someone who's as old as my grandma might be sitting from this chair to mm-hmm. standing up ten times, right? And then maybe like picking up a kettlebell Mm -hmm. 10 times and doing that three times through. Right. The intensity is different, but it's the benefits are the same for everybody. Right. So I, I personally believe that like with a good coach, with a good box Mm -hmm. gym, um, it can be for everybody. True. Is your grandma Italian? Mm -hmm. So it's for her, it's like the equivalent of like stirring the sauce like 10 times quickly. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. Picking up the pizza and up and down, up and down. <laughs> totally. Yeah, she can do it at home. Yeah. So <laughs> she could. So you're saying like it's beneficial for mostly anyone? Yeah, literally like anybody. So who would you think, like who would you say is like should not do CrossFit? Is there like th- one type of people that you think like should not even think about it? Honestly, like I can't think of anybody where I would be like, people you know what, or anything. people people with disabilities, I think, are, like, definitely should try and do some aspect of CrossFit. Obviously, it's dependent on, like, how limiting your disability, disability is. Totally. But um, they do offer a CrossFit certification, like, after you get your L1. It's called, like, CrossFit, like, adapted training, mm-hmm. where they teach you how to scale appropriately based on people's, like, physical limitations. So someone with... Um, I don't know, like someone with like CP, cerebral palsy, maybe it's just having them like lift a PVC pipe over their head like 10 times, mm-hmm. something like that. Just and like there's so much research that shows being in a social group among people who like either look like you or don't look like you can like totally help improve all aspects yeah, of like, your I quality definitely of see life, that you know? True. So I think it's t- totally applicable to anybody. How much rest are you given between workouts like in in terms of days like let's say i worked out and had a class today do i come in tomorrow that's totally dependent on you when we have new people come in we recommend that they come at least three times a week to start Mm -hmm. so every other day um and then once they slowly start to build up their tolerance then they can come you know three days in a row three days on one day off three days on one day off Mm-hmm. In our L1, they taught us that, like, the three days on, one day off is the best, like, split. Um, but then that kind of, like, varies your rest days because it's not an even week. That's true. I just like to go five days a week. I'll go. Five days a week? Yeah. Three days on, one day off, and then 
I'll go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, rest Thursday, mm-hmm. and then Friday, Saturday. And do you guys have like any active recovery kind of things? Yeah, there's um, that are like like wi- within CrossFit type of thing. You know what I mean? It's not not like you know going for a walk or like for a bike ride, like CrossFit specific active recovery methods or no? um yeah i mean it's that's again dependent on like the gym and if they decide to program that they might have that programmed like on the side like there's a resource you can go to on their website that has different active recovery Mm -hmm. um options but like i encourage people to go out and find another hobby so that your brain isn't only like about crossfit so in the summer i'll like go for walks or like go swimming Mm -hmm. um if i could ride a bike i would go ride a bike (laughs) have you gotten any of your friends into crossfit since you became uh... no None? None. In the six years that I've been doing it, like, none of my close friends from, like, my group of girls, mm-hmm. my boyfriend, no. He you came to one of my... Did, what, did that work out with Yeah, you? Oh, but like, it was he just, didn't like, enjoy it. Did he, like, did he finish the whole thing? No. I ran the last mile by myself. I hope he watches this. And I I'm still thinking this. about it. Yeah. He's like, I'm just gonna sit this smile out. And I was like, come on man he's just gonna be supportive and like cheer you on and i didn't see him i think he just went inside he just he went home probably <laughs> probably yeah. yeah so no one joined nobody just my mom oh i guess yeah your mom yeah that, yeah. that counts yeah um so you're an l1 coach and then what how many levels there are there there's i think there's four mm. yeah are you planning on getting yeah so like each certification is i think like a five year it, it lasts for five years and you have the option to like renew the one that you currently have or go up to the next one. You can't go up until five years have passed? No, you can. Okay. It's just like valid for five years. Right, right. You, can, you can coach for five years with mm-hmm. that certification. Mm-hmm. Like in three years, I'll probably um, go to my L2. It doesn't make sense for me to renew a certification mm-hmm. that I already have. Have Have people quit CrossFit while you're, you're coaching or something like that? Like they just found it too intense and maybe too injury, uh, like, you know. The yeah. Risk of injuries high, and they're like, no, I'm, I'm done. I think, yeah, I've definitely seen a lot of people come and go. Um, I think adherence to like your membership and coming to classes is dependent on how good the gym owner is at business. Because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, like it is a business, and you need to be good at like marketing and right. keeping up to date with your members and promoting social events and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And then it's also dependent on the coach, like if. If if you come in and it like I show that I care about you and you know, hey Lou, like I'll see you tomorrow at whatever, four thirty, like you're building a a bond, a friendship. Mm-hmm. So people who are good at doing that will keep their members around and and sometimes it's just not for everybody. But I think it's just people who are not ready to take that step yet. Like it's the too whole... much like uh, uh, at the time being. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think that can happen with with a lot of workout programs yeah not totally. necessarily crossfit people yeah. quit people yeah drop out. women especially like they would come to me there was one lady who's like i'm not losing weight and i was like okay like write down everything you eat for a week and then and then show me she was drinking like coca-cola and like i was okay. like i didn't see you consume right. one vegetable like there's not a single vegetable mm-hmm. on this paper and i was like you know, you're here for an hour a day, but what are you doing in the other 23? That's, true. That's what it's mostly about. It's like yeah. 80% diet, 20%. Yeah, and people don't understand that. And that's that's why I think that they get demotivated because they think like CrossFit's not working for me. And I was mm-hmm. like, mm, it's we'll just working. Cancel out everything yeah, else. you're just not working for you right now. Right, that's true. Yeah, so that's what frustrates me too. Because like as a coach, I invest like effort and time to help you get better. Mm-hmm. And then you're just like not doing your part too on the outside is there like a, a specific diet that people most people on crossfit use oh that's a really good question so um i'm sure you've heard of paleo yeah yeah paleo for a really long time was like this huge thing in crossfit um not so been much around for a long time yeah but i don't know why maybe it's because it was like prehistoric and maybe we all look like prehistoric people like working out yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe that's why we latched onto it but um even more um, streamlined from paleo is something called the zone diet where instead of counting calories and your macros they break things down into like blocks so like one block would have x amount of uh, carbs x amount of protein and x amount of fat and based on like your height and weight and mm-hmm. how old you are you eat this many blocks per meal 
Oh. Zone is, it's pretty hard to understand. Um, but there's like a plan that you can follow and stuff like that. Um, I think now it's kind of just trending towards eating, you know, not too much vegetables and fruits, nuts and seeds, and, you know, your meat mm. and, you know, So not a particular diet, but just like generally... Just eating, shopping clean. the perimeter of your grocery store and finding like fresh options instead mm -hmm. of processed options. Yeah, that's something actually I just found out about recently. It's like, or just realized it's like mm -hmm. the perimeter of the grocery store and then everything in the middle is... Processed. Questionable. Yeah. And paper plates. Yeah. Yeah, and dog food. Mm -hmm. um, but mostly people are on paleo type of thing you'd say because well, i guess like paleo is like you said it's mostly like fruits vegetables nuts and seeds yeah the uh, only meat thing and nothing processed yeah the only thing they advocate against is like grains oh right so they like bread or like oatmeal or rice and stuff like that on paleo they don't they don't eat yeah oh it's right the grains yeah it's grains legumes and grains and legumes i think really yeah mm. Mm -hmm. which like i tried paleo and i didn't like it I actually gained weight on paleo. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I was also, like, in my first year of CrossFit and thought that I could eat, like, sweet potatoes and right, peanut right. butter and when, like, yeah. you know, and just, like, it's still paleo? healthy. Uh, actually, peanuts are a legume, which I found out that you're not what? allowed to eat. Yeah. Peanuts are legumes? Yeah. They grow in uh, in the ground. Yeah, but it's... it's Almonds grow in the ground. Grow <laughs> Carrots? Carrots grow on the ground. <laughs> You're allowed to eat carrots, though. Yeah, exactly. You're allowed to eat potatoes. Okay, so they also grow on the ground. Carrots, right? Yeah, they do. Oh, but, right. like, they're saying you're supposed to eat, like, nuts and seeds, which grow on, like, trees. Why? I don't know. The there's something in yeah, there's something in legumes that paleo um, advocates say doesn't agree with, like, your digestion system. The enzymes in beans. Oh, yeah, because the cavemen fucking knew what agrees with the digestive system what doesn't yeah they also ate their meat like raw yeah they before also, they discovered yeah, exactly. fire so um what about keto do you think uh i don't think keto would be good for crossfit i don't think keto would be good for crossfit either yeah. i'm gonna side with jillian michaels and say i don't like yeah, keto but jillian. for crossfit yeah i just i think you need the carbs if you want to have like maximum And aerobic, and aerobic, uh, yeah. explosive, yeah, you know, stuff like that. You That's need it good. for before, and you need it for your recovery too. Mm -hmm. How do you recover from CrossFit from a CrossFit class? Do you just rest? You just regularly. Cry. You cry. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, recovery. And you have kidney failure. <laughs> you're asking the wrong girl, because like, I tell people to stretch and do mobility, and like, I don't stretch or do mobility. I'm definitely gonna edit this part out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you don't even bother. I honestly am the worst at it. I'm just like too lazy to do it like yeah but you you do, do like one of work these and you're, you're too lazy to stretch <laughs> honestly yeah, i am i I'll, need I'll to get be... into it it's my new year's resolution <laughs> yeah it should yeah three months in you should probably consider that yeah um stretching mobility um you know we ask people to like decrease their heart rate after jump on a row or jump on a bike walk around a little mm -hmm. and then uh recovery is like nutrition and sleep sleep is huge Yeah, recovery. sleep is massive. Yeah. And not just for CrossFit, but for yeah, literally anything. Shout outs to. Yeah, shout outs to. Episode two. <laughs> um, what was I going to ask you? Okay, so as far as injury and intensity, I guess like the main takeaway that I kind of learned today um, is uh, it it's not as crazy as it sounds. It's not no. as crazy as people have you believe. Yeah, that's so, it's so true. Like, People are like, oh, I can't do CrossFit. Like, the biggest misconception is you already need to be fit to do CrossFit. Mm -hmm. And I, like, I'm like, I will show you my before pictures and show you, like, what I looked like before CrossFit. And, like, you don't need to be fit to start. And it's not as intense as people think. And we'll take you and we'll hold your hand step by step and show you how to move well and integrate you into classes. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, I guess not as scary as... You know, because it does deter people away. You know what yeah. I mean. And so after, after learning that's not really that intense. You're gonna go to CrossFit tonight. Like I might. Like I'll not tonight. <laughs> like within the next two you're years. You're busy. <laughs> it's okay. I'll try class within the next two years. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, I think that's a good. Uh, I mean, I'll still know you in two years, so yeah, you'll be here. I'm sure. Yeah. And um, yeah, I don't know. I'll like maybe I'll give it a shot. I don't know. I try to keep an open mind about most things. I think in you life. should. Yeah. As dumb as I, I look sometimes, I think I 
can be open-minded. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll give it a shot. We'll see what happens. It's really fun. Like, what, if I throw up, I throw up, you know? I mean, yeah. It's fine. Just, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, anything, any, like, uh, takeaway kind of message you want to give before... Uh, before Close this off. off before, before signing off. Um, I think my biggest. Any last words? My okay. My last, my final words mm-hmm. are: don't knock it till you try it. I yeah, think. Fair enough. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Don't knock until you try it. Yeah. Beautiful. Good job. Thank you so much. Right, thanks for coming. Thanks for having right. me.